Good morning. I'm Heather Hedges. We are live in Mansfield today where an overnight crash is tying up traffic on busy Route 32. Coming up, we'll tell you how to get around it and we'll show you the dramatic pictures of this one. As the shoe said to the hat, you go on ahead. I'll follow on foot. I've got your early warning forecast coming up next. And a fourth person dies in relationship to the H1N1 flu outbreak. Eyewitness News this morning starts right now. Live from WFSB, Connecticut's first choice for news. This is Channel 3 Eyewitness News this morning. But first, we begin with breaking news out of Enfield. CLMP crews are on the intersection of South Road and Phoenix Avenue, where a utility pole has collapsed. Police say they don't know why the pole fell. There's wires and debris all over the street, so they expect the intersection to be closed for much of the day. As of right now, CLMP says 54 customers are without power in that town. And developing news out of Mansfield now, where a car crashes into a utility pole on Route 32. The road is closed on both sides while cleanup continues this morning. Eyewitness News reporter Heather Hedges is live with the Mobile Newsroom in Mansfield with more. Heather. And we're at the intersection of routes 32 and 44, and this road closure goes on for miles. It goes on all the way down to the intersection of routes 32 and 275. Now, the crash itself happened miles down the road at the intersection of route 32 and North Eagleville Road. State police recently allowed our, us to take our cameras down to the scene of the crash and see it for ourselves firsthand. Take a look at this dramatic video. This white Nissan Pathfinder landed on its side and took down a utility pole and power lines. It happened around 2 in the morning on windy Route 32, which is also, as you can imagine, pretty slick. You might not believe it from the site of the crash, but state police tell us the driver only sustained minor cuts and scrapes. Still, she was transported to Wyndham Hospital, and she has been identified as 26-year-old Nina Tochi from Woodbridge. She is not the owner of the SUV. The bigger impact of the crash seems to be the road closure. These downed wires are still live, and CLMP crews are working on several poles at several stops on Route 32 trying to reroute the power. CLMP says they'll get to the pole later. State police say the cause of the crash is still under investigation, but you can see this truck parked here all morning long. We've seen people stopping and walking over to the police, uh, the trooper's car over here, asking for alternate routes. It is pretty difficult getting around Route 32 because sometimes you have to take long uh, detours out of the way. But the good news is we've got Teresa LaBarbera, the more than capable Teresa LaBarbera, standing by in the traffic center with some alternate routes right now. Teresa, take it from here. Thank you, Heather, very much. Uh, it is a very busy road, and there's really not an easy way around it. But what you can do is follow Route 275 to 195 back onto 32. It's a lengthy detour, but this road is going to be closed till around 10 o'clock, according to the DOT. So again, you're going to have to find that alternate route. Lots of uh, traffic this morning across the state. We're jumping over here to Bolton, Route 6 at Route 384. We have an accident there on the westbound side there. This is in Enfield, a pole collapsed. Police are saying they're not exactly sure. We don't have an explanation to why the pole fell down, but a transformer's down, there are wires down. Messy situation there, so at the intersection of Phoenix Ave and South Road, that's gonna be closed. They're expecting it to be closed all day, but fortunately, if you take a look at the map here, there's plenty of uh, alternate routes you could follow. Hazard Avenue, you could stay on 91, a couple extra exits, or Post Road, that'll get you around that situation there. Disabled vehicle in Windsor, 91 southbound exit 38 A and B. It's off to the right shoulder, not causing any delays, but you'll notice that there is a wrecker on scene there and some extensive flooding in lower Fairfield County. This is in Darien along Route 136 southbound at the I-95 interchange. This is the Connecticut Lottery Spin Point Traffic Report. The estimated Powerball jackpot is $86 million. I think that poll just wouldn't stand for it any longer. I guess it had enough. <laughs> it's 6.30, it was just enough. So that I'm giving out. 6.34, what a weird thing to happen, isn't it? Yeah, no that? crash, no accident. Just fell over. That's bad. Maybe the uh, in structural integrity has been hampered by the rain. What do you Perhaps, think of that? yeah. Let me show you. Cool weather and rainy conditions. Good morning, everybody. It is Friday. Woohoo! All right, now, I know it's been cool, and, well, it's been really cool. The third coolest June on record thus far, and we still have 11 days left in the month. Well, 12 if you, can, if you count today. 63.6 degrees, that's the average temperature. This is since 1905, over 100 years we've been keeping records. Now, I know it's been raining, and it feels like it's been raining forever, but we are nowhere near the highest amount of rainfall for the month of June. Look at that, 1982, over a foot of rain fell 
in one month in 1982. That was the year I graduated high school. I don't really remember that. Five inches in this June so far. Now we still have again 12 days to get through and there is more rain in the forecast. So that number is going to continue to rise. All right, we do have some fog out there for you. Some scattered drizzle. Uh, you can see it here. Clinton, Westbrook over to Killingworth. All of these little tiny blue dots. That's it's like uh, tiny little scattered misty drizzles. Seymour, Hamden, New Haven. All the way up to northern Connecticut, we are, we're seeing some scattered blue dots now. Uh, those have disappeared up in the uh, Hartford area. Take a look. Temperatures are in the mid-60s this morning. Much better than where they've been over the past several days. Um, but it's very foggy out there, folks. Here's Rocky Hill. Reduced visibility all across the central Connecticut River area. Uh, just a mess. Now, Waterbury, you guys were getting a little brightening out there. Look, if you look up, you will see some blue skies. Hurry up. Get out there and look at it. Just run out. <laughs> and scream to your neighbor, I see blue sky! <laughs> look, look neighbor, it's glorious, it's blue, enjoy! Ugh, oh, New Haven, you don't have to run to your neighbor, they already know it's raining and scattered drizzly and misty and grossy. Radar, the rain, the heaviest of the rain has moved out. We are anticipating a little bit of brightening in the skies today, but we can't rule out the possibility of more scattered showers and an iffy weekend. We'll talk more about that coming up in less than 10. In the meantime, temperatures are going to be in the low to mid 70s today, which is 10 degrees better than yesterday, but it's still going to be mostly cloudy with scattered showers and drizzle. Your seven-day forecast is coming up. In the meantime, we're going to turn it over to Henna with a check of today's news. Henna, good morning to you. Good morning, Scott. We'll check in in a few. Thank you. An autopsy is scheduled today after a body was found in Enfield. The body was found just before 11 in the morning on the campus of the Mass Mutual Financial Group. State police say it's impossible to visually identify the person. He's described as five foot five, weighing 160 pounds, the same description as Jody King, the 28-year-old construction worker from upstate New York who went missing two months ago. Officers say dental records should show whether that body is that of King's. The fourth death related to the H1N1 virus is from Hartford. The mayor's office has confirmed the victim is a resident of the capital city. That person died at Hartford Hospital on Wednesday. The state says the victim was in their 40s and did have underlying medical conditions. The previous three victims were from Waterbury. There have been 767 confirmed cases of the flu in our state. Manchester police need your help in finding a missing teenage girl. They say 14-year-old Mariana Mendoza, seen here, ran away from home. She's approximately 4 feet 11 inches tall and weighs about 120 pounds. She is known to spend time in New Britain, Mayberry Village in East Hartford, and the north end of Hartford. Call Manchester police if you have any information on her whereabouts. Now to the state's budget crisis. Lawmakers will meet at the state capitol today, hammering out a state budget. Democrats say they have a plan involving $3.5 billion in spending cuts, but the governor says she's skeptical. She's criticizing Democrats for not providing any details of those proposed cuts. Both the House and the Senate begin their special session later this morning. One cost-cutting plan to reduce the state's budget deficit is working well, but raising some questions about public safety. Governor Rell's goal was to get 3,000 state workers to take early retirement. Nearly 500 more have signed on, including state police. 110 state troopers will be taking the early retirement package. State police say some new recruits will offset some of those vacancies, but it is still the largest group they have ever leave all at once. Sikorsky Aircraft cuts about 2% of its global workforce. That's about 350 jobs. The cuts were part of a restructuring plan that was announced earlier in the year. The company cited a slowdown in the commercial aerospace market as the reason. Sikorsky employs more than 9,000 people right here in our state. There is some good news on the job front, though. The Department of Labor says Connecticut gained 3,600 jobs last month. This comes after eight straight months of job losses. Five of the state's major industries showed an increase in the number of jobs. The state's unemployment rate is at about 8 percent. That's lower than the national rate. There will be alcohol sales allowed this 4th of July. The state says there is a 1982 statute amending the law prohibiting alcohol sales on some major holidays. Liquor stores are not required to be open on the 4th, though. This is only the fourth time since 1982 that the holiday has come on a Saturday. 
People are trying to save the fireworks show this July in West Haven. The town has been struggling to raise money for the show. Today, a fundraiser luncheon will be held at the Texas Roadhouse on Sawmill Road. The proceeds will go directly to the fireworks fund. The event lasts from 1130 in the morning to 330 this afternoon. Trying to catch school bus drivers speeding. How a website is helping schools and parents crack down. Plus, what the U.S. is doing to protect Hawaii from North Korea's nuclear missile test. Welcome back. Time 642. After four days of protests over Iran's presidential election, thousands have gathered to listen. Iran's supreme leader is addressing a crowd of thousands in a rare appearance. Susan Roberts has the latest from Washington. There wasn't an empty spot in Tehran University this morning where thousands came to hear Iran's most powerful figure speak. During Friday prayers, the supreme leader appealed for calm, addressing the nation for the first time since the presidential election threw the country into chaos. The winner of that race, Mahmoud Ahmadinejad, had a front row seat. Throughout the entire week, the Supreme Leader has urged Iranians to unite behind Ahmadinejad. But supporters of opposition leader Mir Hussein Mousavi refused to back down, holding massive rallies in defiance. On Thursday, tens of thousands wearing black marched to mourn those killed during this week's protest clashes. Iran has rejected all foreign criticism of its election, especially from the U.S. But President Obama insists he's not picking sides and that he will continue to pursue nuclear negotiations with Iran no matter who wins. Mousavi and two other candidates have made more than 600 complaints to Iran's Council of Guardians, the panel that oversees elections. The objections include shortage of ballot papers and pressure on voters to support a particular candidate. The councils invited all three to discuss their complaints on Saturday. The Supreme Leader's offer to recount some of the disputed votes hasn't satisfied Mousavi backers. They want a whole new election, claiming the first one was littered with fraud. But according to Ahmadinejad, he is the legitimate winner. The president told a cabinet meeting that 25 million of 40 million voters approve of the way he's running the country. Susan Roberts, Channel 3 Eyewitness News. The United States has deployed anti-missile defenses around Hawaii ahead of a possible North Korean missile launch next month. North Korea has made threats of war and pledged to expand its nuclear bomb making. Reports say North Korea may fire its most advanced ballistic missile towards the islands. The suspected missile launch could be tested sometime around the Independence Day holiday. A Detroit man confesses to being a hitman. Police say Vincent Smothers confessed just hours after being arrested. He even gave details about how some of those hits happened. But now Smothers' lawyers want to ask a judge to have those confessions thrown out, claiming he was worn down while in custody. Police deny those claims. Is your child's school bus driver going too fast? How a website is helping catch speeders. I can't, I have had more emails about the spider versus the bug controversy. People, relax and have some cereal, all right? Your previous emailer was mistaken. The thing with six legs is an insect. Spiders have eight legs. Either one and many others can all be called bugs. The con Walter, you, you messed me up here, but I'm going to move on, and I want you to move on, too. 645. What's going to be bugging you is the forecast. Wait till you see it. Eyewitness News continues right after this break. I I'm out of here. It's I got to get out of here. So it's the spider versus bug controversy. It's spider versus the insect controversy. Both a spider and an insect can be called bugs, but a spider is not an insect. An insect has six legs, a spider has eight legs. And regardless, Barbara Stevens has turned the television off because she can't stand to look at them. 647, good morning. What a controversy ensuing here. Who knew? Who knew that we would create such a controversy over a bug? Who cares? Teresa, say it again out I loud. I said, who cares? Exactly. That's my point. Come here. Give me a little hug. <laughs> okay. I need, I, need, I need some love today. I'm sorry to do this. That. Thank you. All right, All right. goodbye. <laughs> foggy, 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 oggy, oggy. I'll say, I'll say, I'll say, I'll say, I'll say, I'll say. Here they come, all the Channel 3 employees. Yes, we're carpooling now. They're all taking one big bus in. Here they all come. Here comes Claren and Dana and Patience and Victor and everybody. Nice to see you all. Uh, we are looking at some pretty better, pretty better 
Yes, that's not a saying. Don't use it at home. Waterbury's looking pretty good this morning. Look at that. It's not raining. It's not drizzly. It's not even bad in Waterbury. Rejoice, rejoice, oh Waterbury. Your time has come. I don't know how long it's going to last, but enjoy it. New Haven, it's pretty dismal out there, but even the sun is trying to break through in New Haven. Temperatures in the lower 60s. It's not going to be as bad a day as it was. Little spots of blue. That's not acne. That is little, that little tiny drizzly spots and some fog out there as well. Look at this. It's a triangle right there. That's an isosceles triangle, 45 degree angle. Now, I'm not saying that because somebody will get, I'll, will say I'm wrong. Two days away, summer begins. Just keep that in mind. It's not going to feel like summer this weekend, but it is two days away on the calendar. Under. Heavy rain, three inches plus in parts of Connecticut yesterday. That is gone. Don't be fooled, though. We have more in store for you. We got more rain for the upcoming weekend. One, two, Shlemiel, Shlemazel, Hostin Pepper Incorporated. We're going to do it. Give us future cast, we'll take it. Scattered showers, you don't have to rake it. Uh, right through four this afternoon, scattered showers. More nasty weather. You might see some brightening in the sky tomorrow morning, but there's also going to be some fog, so I don't know how much you're going to see of that. Then tomorrow during the day, mostly cloudy with maybe a scattered shower. Nothing too particularly heavy. The albino squirrels say hello. Hello. Yes, and there's his mate, one on top of the fence, one from in the bottom in Middletown. They're wishing you a nice day. Temperatures will be in the mid-70s today. It is going to be um, a better day than yesterday, but not as good as it should be. With cooler than normal temperatures, wow, only in the low 70s this weekend. We should be in the low 80s. We're going to be seeing mostly cloudy skies with scattered showers, not washout either day. Saturday night into Sunday, we might get some heavier rain, and that could be an inch of rain Saturday night into Sunday. Uh, then Monday, more scattered showers. And then Tuesday, six bags, 82, 87 on Tuesday and Wednesday, so there is some better news in the forecast. Liz Homicki, Eduardo Vido. That was pretty good. Stacy Bearable, Brendan Baker, Nat and Renee Jenkins having an anniversary. Patricia Cor Corbett, Sean Galeski, Walt and Judy Bartozowitz, right? Bartozowitz. Nick Sardo, David Hermanson, Christopher Samil Jr., Mike Coppola is having a birthday, um, and our, uh, Amanda Bloom and Rose DeMeo. Go to the kids' camp. Go to the kids' camp. We have opportunities there for you, uh, ages 8 to 12, 50 bucks for the week, an overnight camp, the only one of its kind in Connecticut. Send your kids there. If you are financially challenged, this is a perfect opportunity for you. It costs you $50 for the entire week. If you can't afford that, call the camp. I'm sure that they can work something out with you. Five, uh, 742 camp. 742 camp. And have a great time. So happy like, birthday to Hazel Patrick, my buddy who watches us every morning. Oh, Hazel happy Patrick! Birthday. Yes, happy all birthday. right. Kind of an odd situation in Enfield this morning. We have some live pictures of a utility pole that co just collapsed. I don't get it. I don't get it either, but uh, because of that, South Road at Phoenix Avenue is closed. And uh, it's going to be closed for quite some time. You can see that there are wires down. There's a transformer that's down. So you are going to have to find an alternate route. What you can do is follow Hazard Avenue or Post Road, and that'll get you around this situation there. So again, uh, wires down in Enfield there along South Road. The rest of the state, we have some problems here in North Central Connecticut. We're going to zoom in here to Mansfield along Route 32. It's closed between North Eagleville Road and Ravine Road. We had a car hit a utility pole. It happened around 2 o'clock this morning, and because of that, uh, the road is going to be closed till around DO, uh, till around 10. The DOT is estimating. So, in this situation, follow 275 to 195 to 32. I understand that it is a lengthy detour, but might be the only uh, way around the situation this morning. We have another accident. This is in Bolton along 384 at Route 6 westbound. Um, police are on the scene there. It's not causing too many delays, but it is out there. Disabled vehicles still in Windsor, 91 southbound, exit 38 A and B off to the right shoulder. You'll notice a wrecker. And some extensive flooding in Lower Fairfield County this three morning. According to Scott Darian, had uh, somewhere around three inches of rain yesterday, and it's an extremely slow go because of some huge puddles uh, along Route 136 southbound. This just Ooh, bakers trade bread recipes on a need to know basis. That's a good one, Haney. This is the Connecticut Lottery's Pinpoint Traffic Report. The estimated Powerball jackpot is $86 million.
Thank you, Teresa. Time now 6.53. If you think your child's school bus driver is just driving way too fast, there's a site that can help. The website clickfix.com is where people post concerns and video evidence for everyone else to see, including police and city officials. New Haven schools say they require all buses to have GPS units. They encourage all parents to document issues, so this way they can look at the GPS records, which show speed. Time 6.53, here's a quick look at this morning's big stories. An autopsy is scheduled for today after a body is found in Enfield. State police say the body was found on the campus of the Mass Mutual Financial Group. They say it's impossible to visually identify the person. Officers will use dental records to help ID the victim. A one-car crash on Route 32 in Mansfield forces police to shut down both sides of the road. Police say at least around 2 o'clock this morning, the car hit a utility pole, knocking it down along with several wires. They are currently cleaning up the scene before they can reopen the road. Crews say the driver suffered minor injuries. Currently, CLMP says there are 285 customers without power. And here's a live look from our Hartford City Cam. It's foggy and dreary out there. Scott will be right back with a look at your forecast. I didn't get to all the birthdays. I will do them in the 7 o'clock hour. I apologize. We're going to take a look at the seven-day forecast. It's going to be scattered showers today, maybe some breaks of sun. Saturday and Sunday, kind of cloudy with more scattered showers. Just take it slow out there this morning. We've got a lot of traffic and some wet roads. Be careful. Teresa. All right. And Mansfield Route 32 remains closed between North Eagleville Road and Ravine Road. Follow 275 to 195 to 32. I know that's a long detour, but it's really the only way around it. Enfield South Road at Phoenix is closed because of a pull down. That's going to be closed all day. Hazard Road or Stand 91. And then in Bolton, Route 6 at 384, we have another crash. That's our news for now. We'll be back at 725. Have a fantastic weekend. Meredith 2009. Thank you, Blades. Great mm -hmm. weekend.